Brothers, welcome back to Dummy Nation. As per the most upvoted country in the last video, we are going to be playing today as Albania, which brings us back to the friggin' Mediterranean. <laughs> but a much easier start than Tunisia and Palestine were because we are a part of the EU, which is very good. And we're surrounded by a couple of neighbors who are not part of the EU. So that's Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, and Kosovo. I honestly thought Kosovo was. But anyways, we start out as the 115th best GDP, 88th best military power. We have decent money in the bank. Let's go ahead and bring down our social spending ever so slightly because we don't have a very large population. So we don't need to worry about that until we get into probably uh, the, the single digits at the very least. Let's go ahead and increase our military spending. That's going to take us down to 1.77. I'm okay with that for right now. And then let's start investing in the military research and then into full reactive armor. Wonderful. And then let's go ahead and take a look at our, uh, our ideology. So we are a democracy, which is great. We're going to go full liberator. And then honestly, I'm going to take military service down pretty heavily because just because we're part of the EU. So until we lose that, I'm perfectly happy with having that be basically zero. So that is great for us. And um, let's just go ahead and buy out some tanks. I would love 2000. Now taking a look at our current military, we only have tanks and commandos. So we definitely need a little bit of gunners. Let's get a small amount of gunners. And I would love a thousand. Yeah, that's good rockets. And then let's get some more commandos out there. And that is going to do it. And then we'll just save up and get ready to attack our primary targets of Kosovo, Serbia. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We're in the Mediterranean and we have troops right away, which means we can get Malta. We only were making 7.96. So this will hopefully increase our income. We can get Monaco and Malta. So with those two defeated, we're now making 17. So we added 10 to our name, which doesn't sound like a lot. And honestly, it's not. But we can go home, get up our military power start investing in combat training to increase our foot soldiers and get our military up. We're going to have to probably wait until we get our military spending all the way up to our effectiveness 25, because again, when you start as a smaller country, you really can't afford to lose your military in the beginning. You really need to pick your targets wisely. So worst case scenario is happening. Turkey is attacking Syria. Now, when Turkey attacks Syria, there's nothing you can do. Even if we got involved here, they would overpower us and... If we got involved, we'd just be fighting their military. We'd lose troops and there'd be absolutely nothing we could do. Turkey would still get the land. So unfortunately, we have to bid that one adieu. But in great news, Montenegro is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us and fighting Kosovo. And I think Kosovo is actually going to win this one. Are you fighting them too? Hold on. Let's get involved ourselves. We have the military power. I don't want to lose out on Kosovo. So let's jump in here as well. Help fight down the little bit of tanks and everything left. And if um, Montenegro goes, oh, excuse me, Montenegro goes down, we can get involved and take out Montenegro, which will give us better borders on Bosnia. Yeah, they only have 29 tanks left. So that's a possibility. Now, Montenegro is part of the EU, but I think we're going to be able to get that down. And I don't really want to sacrifice a lot of land to Serbia just because we're going to be fighting them later on. So that's really unfortunate. Okay. Okay. Well, we can go into Montenegro now, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. And hopefully we can get them down before the rest of the EU comes to their defense. There we go. Got them down. Now, a lot of countries don't like that. Whatever. Don't care. Gives us great access into attacking Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm just going to chill out for right now and see if Serbia maybe will do some of our heavy lifting here. And honestly, since Bosnia doesn't have any tanks or rockets, I'm just going to go ahead and fight them now and try and recover a little bit economically by capturing all their territory. And there we go. So we got them down. You're, you're there. Yeah, I was about to say, your territory shouldn't even exist. Russia's going ham into Ukraine. Now, we would love to fight Serbia, but for right now, I'm just going to stay on the border and see if anybody does the work for me because Russia going down means we might need a way out. And if they do go down, then we're going to need to kind of push over through Morocco once again. Honestly, I'm going to fight Algeria down. And the reason I'm going to do this is because typically the Arab League isn't that expensive to buy off. Egypt's the only one I'm super concerned about, but we can definitely fight down Algeria. Our military spending's not quite high, as high as we would like. But let's go and see who's all declared war on us. Iraq, UAE, let's just go ahead. We're not going to be fighting these guys anytime soon. Uh, we don't have money for that. 
Okay, so these guys are actually pretty expensive this time. So we'll fight down these guys and just claim the parts of Algeria that we want. We might run away if we see a big army, but most of the nations that are going to come to the help of Algeria aren't going to be like super aggro, massive armies. Okay, here is Iraq. Okay, Iraq is very cheap now. 6,000. Yep, go away. It's because I think we defeated Algeria's army, so they're less likely to really get involved in what is ultimately a lost cause. So we could just buy off everybody that comes to. Who do be this? Yemen? Yeah, Yemen's not even a gold, so that's fine. Algeria's on the out and out. It's now a nice little opportunity for us to get out is actually going through Mali. Mali doesn't have any troops, and then we have the opportunity to go through Senegal or the Ivory Coast. Either way will give us access to the outside world, which is fantastic. Now, the only thing that will stop it if the United States comes back here to finish off Mali. So let's go ahead and start working down Mali. Now, Mali, who are your friends? Not really anybody in the world. Great. OK, so we can jump in on this, grab, try and grab our way out. If we don't, if we're not successful in getting through Mali and getting down here, like if the United States cuts us off, then we're going to have to be really ambitious and push through Mauritania or Morocco. Those are some big rebels, but I don't think we have a choice in fighting them. So <laughs> we'll get them down. It's honestly not going to be that uh, hurtful to our military, but still sucks that we have to fight it. Great. OK, so we've pushed through Mali. Fantastic news. We're making 143. Now, this is slightly inflated because our social spending is very low. We're going to have to get that up a little bit higher. But right now, that puts us in 48th best GDP, 30th in military power. Now, we have a choice between going into the Ivory Coast, which doesn't have a lot of troops, or um senegal what are you guys this 90 69 69 i think it would be worth it nice um let's check out your diplomacy you are friends with brazil you are friends with nigeria if we fight down senegal which is again friends with nigeria then potentially we could work down nigeria and then go into nigeria so i think that is what we're going to do we're just going to combine our forces and attack Senegal. And Nigeria has declared war on us, so hopefully they send a small army that we can crush. But we honestly might get through this fast enough that we don't even have to worry about. It. Never mind. There's their forces. Good. This is something we wanted, believe it or not. Great. Now we've crushed their forces. They're still not that. Well, let's hopefully they send over another because I'd be a little bit intimidated to go into that amount. So they are done. We can't get this because this is no longer. Uh, what is that? Gabon, I think. It's uh, Portugal. Portugal already took it. Well, let's go through, hopefully, good friend United States, and they don't care that we go through their territory. Who is this? France. And that's probably Portugal again. Okay. Let's park it right here, just in case the United States goes into Nigeria. And if they do, is there really any big economic zones? We could probably get this area, and I think that might be worth it. So let's just hang out here and try and build up our military presence a little bit more. So Italy is attacking Libya. Libya has gone. We could potentially get a little bit of economic uh, economy from them, but honestly, I don't think it's worth it just because I don't want to anger Egypt right now. This is a great opportunity. Since we left Libya alone, Italy's been attacking. Morocco has been sending their troops over. Let's go to the capital of Morocco and grab that. What amazing pathing. Morocco's capital is like right here and their economic zones are mostly along the coast. So this is the area we need to get. Let's just go straight to the capital, challenge them, because they only have 144 tanks left. No, they have nothing. Perfect. No, they actually had some. Ah, this game really lies to you sometimes. The military just like goes away. It's just like glitches out. Egypt's declared war on us. Can we buy off Egypt? Yep, go away. It's just Egypt that's declared war on us. Great. So we can just roll through the rest of Morocco, grab a lot of the economic zones and just everything at this point, which brings us up to 200. And where do we sit now in the global world? 36. Okay, population 17. So this is the point where as soon as this war is over, I'm going to rebalance my budget to include a little bit more social spending to try and flight future inflation. Did you know the game before you played it? Yeah, I watched um, originally Grave play it like a year ago. And I saw CG play it. And I was like, I think I could play this game better than he could. Like, no offense to CG. Like, he's a lot better at some games than me. Like, he's really good at Risk, and I'm just not. So I was like, I think I could play this game. Like, this is right at my alley. So that's kind of what inspired me to play it. Okay, let's split and try and get this done a little bit faster. But after this, we got to relax on the, on the military front. 
Now, we can afford to take a lot more risks as Albania because we're part of the EU, but as soon as that breaks down, we're going to be a little bit screwed. We lost a lot of our allies just by attacking Monaco, but that was kind of a foothold we needed to get to Bosnia. Oh, Serbia is also getting attacked. Can I get up there in time? We got a good chunk of it. Did we get the economic zones of Serbia? No, we really didn't. That's un Well, we got one, so that's helpful. And we're still getting help from... Was that Bulgaria? Great. Okay. 273. Everybody's done. Let's send the army home. Our very weakened army. So we sit at 25th best GDP, 38th best military power. Let's go ahead and rebalance our budget a little bit. Let's get this, this, and bring this down a little bit to here. And start growing our economy. Social spending definitely needs to go up. We definitely need a little bit more uh, social spending. And I would love to eventually pivot down to this and get ec economic and get where's welfare state welfare states yeah improves the effect of social spending on population growth by up to 35 percent which is very good i would kind of like to get potentially another level of combat training just because russia is still on the table so is oh my god china it's gone down oh buddy we gotta get over here Okay, let's find the economic zones. China so rarely falls at this point. There's a lot like right there. Can we get right here? And just buy me like a lot of extra commandos and as many tanks as we can get. An extra one point into combat training. There we go. We're going to have to fight down militias, which is going to be pretty heavy. The reinforcements will definitely help. But when China goes down like this, you have to get involved. There's no choice to but to get involved. Remember when Albania, Albania, all over the place. Okay, that's a big army. Um, peace treaty. There we go. We just didn't have enough to keep up the presence, especially when nobody else. Oh my God. Is Russia going down too? Nope. Germany's just invading them. Okay. So let's just hold out here. We are so weak on our military presence at this point. 42nd best military power, but 11th best GDP. China's going to come back and fight this, but I'm hoping that somebody else will take away their military presence and not be uh, aggressive towards me. So let's just hang out here. Try and build things back up again because we are very weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. India's back again. We just peace treated out with China, but now that India's attacking. I think this is going to be the, the swan song of China. As we've very effectively pushed with South Korea and India. We've captured most of the big economic zones. Which is great for us. And in fact, that's the end of our kind of escapades. So let's just make sure that we get as much as we possibly can. This is actually a good area right here. Let's we'll see if we can contend for it. Yes. Okay, great. That is the end of our escapades in China. Not a lot, but we gained a lot of the very heavy economic zones, which is great for us. We're making 3.95. It is now time to go home and actually build up a military. We can finish off combat training, and then I'm going to kind of beeline into getting this. Now, we need 20k points into, into or 50k to get to welfare state. So self-sufficient economy would be really nice. I think we put 10k into this and then we'll start working down our economics a little bit so many games we play we do really well but then the economy like slows us down to the point where we have to capture the rest of the world i'm gonna try and combat that this time and see if we can just get by with a little bit more economic prowess let's take this army and just finish off mauritania just to kind of better our better our borders a little bit it's more than strong enough we're not even using this army over here it's still there it's very weak this is the majority of our army at this point and mauritania has no troops so getting a little bit of bump in economy will be nice nigeria is still on the table nigeria doesn't have any troops oh my gosh forget about mauritania let's go get nigeria now, now nigeria i believe they're good friends with india so we might have to buy off india we do have 12 million in the bank we'll see if india actually declares yeah india has declared war on us which is not somebody i really want to fight but they're cheap out to get them to go away mostly because nigeria is kind of a lost cause they don't have the the troops to maintain anything i want to keep investing in tanks while before inflation really gets the best of us tanks are the tanks and rockets are the most expensive things to get so it's best to get a big number at the beginning and worry about kind of backfilling your commandos on the end now that's not to say that you shouldn't have commandos at the at the beginning like we've got 1.39 million. Ultimately, commandos and gunners protect your tanks. They take attrition a lot faster. They kind of shield the tanks a little bit. So if you don't have those, you're kind of in a bad spot. We're making 7K a tick. The economy is doing really well. We're growing at like 2%, which is good for us. 
And now we just kind of slow play this, hopefully to victory. Great. Nigeria's been defeated. 7.56. Fantastic. We're almost at 10. So we can potentially start investing in the economy a little bit. Economy's going great. This is a great game for us. Um, again, we're fourth in fourth in GDP, first in military power. So we're doing really well on that front. So let's just move this army down to Argentina. Play a little bit of the patient game, but if anybody invades Argentina, I'm going to be the first one there to try and get their capital. My brother. And now that we are doing really well in economy and we're potentially going to start making some enemies, I'm going to bring up military spending. Honestly, let's just get everybody here and we're going to fight Argentina. We'll buy off anybody that comes to their defense, but let's get everybody over here. Okay, now they have rockets, which is good for offense, but it's terrible against defense. So they are actually substantially weaker than they appear. And they're going to be a quick, easy out. There we go. So we have Brazil. We're going to need to buy off. Who else? Australia. I, you know what? I honestly don't want to pick a fight with Australia right now. So we'll just buy them off too. And it is always best to attack the militias right away. Because the longer you let them stay around, the bigger they get and the harder it becomes. And then you can see their influence grows, which means more militias will spawn as well. So it's really important to try and take them down as soon as possible. Now, the ones on the fringes aren't as important because you can always come back to them. But like these ones, you don't want to have to be dealing with this because it just becomes quite the problem. You're going to have to be backtracking a lot. It just really hinders a lot of things. Let's go over here and try and cut down the U. But as you can see, left unchecked, they can become a problem. Ooh, Egypt's fallen. Can we get over here in time? I think this is where the hot zone's going to be. Or we didn't get to Cairo, but we got some of the Nile, which is very important. And now that leaves Saudi Arabia alone. Now we have Saudi Arabia does have a lot of friends. So we're going to have to buy some people off. Everybody above 75 is going to come to their defense. So India, Canada, Pakistan, Spain, and Lebanon. Lebanon, I'm not going to worry about, but Spain, Pakistan, Canada, India, I will attempt to buy off. But we do have 10 points that we could put into economic research, which is going to then allow us that to get this a little bit cheaper. So now we'll just kind of focus in on getting some economic policies going. What's the first level going to be? 8.2. Okay. Pakistan, how's your military? Yep, pretty high. Buy you off. Ooh, and Russia's coming. So maybe we just split the pathing. The pathing. India is coming over as well. So let's try and buy them off. There we go. In fact, can I get an alliance tree with you? Four million for India? That's a big economy. So I definitely want to get that on my side. I swear to God, you can just go right here. Oh, fantastic. Now we're making 13 a tick. That's the end of Saudi Arabia, I believe. Let's just send everybody home. Brazil's still weak. Yeah, Brazil is weak. They only have five, but honestly, I'm kind of... Yeah, honestly, Brazil's probably a better target than Russia. Maybe we do just get everybody over here because that would be a real shame to miss out on Brazil. This economy, 3.3, that's great. That's good. That's a good mark to hit. Oh, the United States and Italy are fighting. Good luck, boys. While everybody else is distracted, though, I'm going to fight Brazil. So we'll just buy people off as they come. And I think that's the last one. I think Peru Denmark's declared war on us, too. I just don't want them invading up north. Denmark, can we just be friends? Yeah, most of the Europeans are going to be pretty cheap to buy off just because we had a long-standing alliance with them. Wonderful. Brazil's been defeated. All right. Now we send everybody home. We're in a great spot. Russia might be our next target or South Korea. South Korea is good. Uh, they've got such a good economy. What about Japan? 78. Wow, really? 78 million. What do you have? 4 million uh, gunners. Yeah, that would be tough to push through. We're getting close to the point everyone's going to fight us, but if... Russia really wants to throw away their military. Maybe we just get up here. We don't have any access to them other than here. So let's get up here. Yeah, Russia's so weak. This is our time. We strike here. We have 30 million in the bank. What do we... Oh, watch out. What do we need more of? Probably could use still some more. We definitely need more gunners. So, so let's first off get 8 million in gunners. And then let's get 3,000 more rockets. Now, I'm not going to wait for them. I'm just going to start pushing now because I don't think Russia has any friends left yeah they're friends with bangladesh pakistan and india we can buy off pakistan and india again and just push for russia excuse me i was told i'd be a liberator what are all these <laughs> freaking armies doing here so a lot of people have gotten involved but as long as we stay down south we'll capture a lot of the the big economic zones that we need for the 
the progress towards winning. We don't mind losing this because you can see it's really not militarized over here and Japan will probably become a target. Although honestly, South Korea is my like biggest dream target to hit at this point, just because they have so much mech um, of China and then South Korea itself is very valuable. Oh, thank God you're destroying Pakistan. Good. Pakistan's kind of been the thorn in my side too. Just attacking us pretty frequently. How's overall military strength looking? Pretty good. We do want to bump this up probably closer to, you know, 50k tanks, even though they we're the strongest military in the world. At some point, we're going to make too many enemies and we can't buy our way out of it. But there's most of Russia down. They still have some colonies left that we're going to fight down. India has fallen, though. India lost all their troops in a fight with Pakistan. So they're neutralized for the most part. It's going to be a rough road. I'm going to try and get a lot more commandos ready for this fight. Just because we have them maxed out, they're decently strong and we can... They do really well fighting down militias, which is going to be the bane of our existence the moment we fight India. All right, we have 40 million in the bank. Let's go ahead and start this war, buy off who we need to, and then crush down India. We also have to keep an eye on the United States. They're at 7, 69%. How much? What's their military looking like? They've got a lot of armored divisions, which means we need to start investing heavily in rockets. No, no, no. Fight over here. Fight over here. I promise you it's worthwhile. We just need to block the United States from grabbing more of India's land. We can't afford for the United States to get more of a lead on us than they do at 70%. It's going to become pretty crucial that we uh, have to fight down the United States probably now so that they don't get too close to victory. All right, we've successfully blocked the United States from getting any more access to India. Now, they can still get some of the, 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 like the Philippines and so forth, but most of this, like China, is what was at stake. There's still a lot of big population areas in China and India that I didn't want the United States to get a hold of. Is that India defeated? Yes, India has been defeated. All right. So with that, first in military power, second in GDP only to the United States. They are growing their economy faster than we're able to grow ours. In fact, ours is shrinking a little bit, probably because we don't have alliances with a lot of these people. We have a lot of rockets, which is going to counter them very effectively. They don't have barely any gunners, but we counter the United States Army very, very effectively. But I'm just worried about the rest of the world kind of attacking us at this point. I'm going to bring all of my army over here, and we're just going to try and build up our military presence a little bit more with just absolute commando spam. All right, there's our entire army. We now have 5 million foot soldiers. That should be enough to counter the United States. Again, most of their strength comes from tanks. We have an equal amount of rockets to their tanks. So in theory, we'll win this war. Let's go ahead and start. And hopefully it won't hurt us that bad. Oh, we do have another 8.2 to finish up self-sufficient economy. That will decrease our economic growth based off other nations' opinion of us, which as you can see is pretty sluggish right now because we are attacking the uh, United States, which is a big economic partner of a lot of the world. So people aren't going to be super happy about that. But we should be able to fight down everybody's army, even though we are currently split. There's the United States Army. If we get too weak, I'm going to pull these armies back together, though. All right, so we flip-flopped with the United States. Fantastic. We're at 70%, and we're actually growing. Canada's declared war on them, too. Give me, like, one army to go fight these rebels. Can we finish up that? Um, smart taxation will help. Let's get some smart levels of smart taxation, economic growth up to 20%. That's going to be very helpful for us because we are at a potential point where we could just win this game with our economy. We're not growing because so much of the world hates us. But I think we're, we're close enough if we can just maintain what we're getting while we're gaining parts of the, United, the, the remainder of the United States. And if we go to war with like a second place South Korea, I think that'll put us in enough position to win the game. All right? Is that the United States defeated? They have been defeated. Okay. All right, so we're still getting invaded by some other countries, but let's just go and go for the jugular and fight down South Korea. It might be enough. They have 50%. Now, we won't get 50% because we're going to be losing constantly economic power, but fighting them down is at least going to give us a fighting chance to blitz our way to victory. Let's just scatter and go. I think we can get it. We're at 80%. I think we can get it. I'm not even worried about anything at this point. We're just go. If we need to recuperate our military, we will. How weak have we gotten? Pretty weak. Or a 96%. Okay, let's just start spamming commandos. Every time we get a commando unit, we're just going to tell them to go fight somewhere. Split and go. Split and go. We're so close. We're so close. 
We haven't lost our homeland yet. Come on. Come on. Yes! Algeria. Surprisingly, I mean, not that difficult. Being part of the EU is always such a benefit. And that really let us catapult our way into attacking some people without a lot of consequences. Moving our way through Algeria and getting a way out allowed us to do some big things. China falling early was a big plus. And we just kind of snowballed from there. But Albania, a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. But thank you guys so much for the suggestion. If you have a country you want me to play next, put it in the comments down below. I'll play as the most upvoted country in the next episode. But thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far in the video. If you have made this far in the video, hey, give a thumbs up. Really helps out a lot. If you're new around here, subscribe for more. I put up videos every day. But excuse me, boys, I'll see you in the next one. And a special thank you to all of my members with shout outs to producers Chris Mitchell, Kevin Andy Stamps, Icy, Christopher Ryans, American Patriot, Quag Sire Lover 32, and executive producers Miss Gets the Mallard, A137, Mason Slash Aurelius, Rob Drake, Rob Coleman, Uther Ekana, New Brex, Br Brock Lowry, Daniel Stevens, Sakari Scarlet, Morwin, Ogan Gabriel, Maverick 149, Jeremy Daniels, Crushland, Austin, and new sponsors Abagula and Gary Gar Garo. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one.